some jazz to play as you. You gon' learn, you gon' learn, you gon' learn. It was just past one winter tree man with a four or five step to the door like, oh my gosh, just throw that cash in a back bag. Hey everybody, it's Liz from the Lemon Bowl. Vince from Irie Kitchen. And welcome to the Irie Lemon Podcast. Episode 39. 39. Are we recording? We're recording. Friends. This is episode 39 <laughs> of the Irie Lemon Podcast. Good to be back. I know. How are you doing, friend? I'm good. We had a fun little day at the lake this week. It's been nice to like get outside a lot. Yeah. I've been, uh, I just feel like I've really been soaking up Michigan this year. Are you kind of getting a chance to do that more with the restaurant only open weekends? Well, I, well, yeah, yes. And then uh, I never did before, really. So I'm also just getting that. Because in my brain, it was like COVID, it's still here. Yeah. And like, you know, we get all, what is it, four seasons? Yeah. So we got all four seasons here. And so uh, you better enjoy the summer because yeah. the way people are acting. Oh, yeah. By August. We're just basically waiting That's going to be taken away from exactly. us. And so, like, moment. so you might as well get the sun you can, uh, you know, go on the lake. I brought the homies out, you know. Yeah. We can't swim, but we're creating waves. <laughs> so we love funny. that line. Yeah. Shout, um, out to, shout out to Mark. All right, cool. So today, you guys, we're changing things up a little bit. We typically talk about business, personal growth, entrepreneurship, you know, all that good stuff. But a lot of people also ask us about cooking. It kind of makes sense since you're a restaurant owner, chef, I'm a food blogger, recipe developer, and we've never talked about food on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, this is what people have been waiting for. I think so. They don't care about that business stuff. They want to talk about food. (laughs) You know, it's summer. We're in a pandemic. Mm. We're gonna switch it up a little bit. Um, so, how do you feel about talking about cooking? I mean, it's what I do for a living. Do you even know how to cook? A little bit here and there. <laughs> All right. So, I thought what we'd do today is talk about ten tips for becoming a better cook, because obviously that's a you know. First of all, I love to create. I always talk about creating massive value, and I feel like Vince and I probably have some easy little things in our back pockets that we don't even think about as being like cooking tips because we cook all the time that we can share. Uh, I know a lot of people right now are coming home from like the farmer's market or the CSA and they have all these fresh ingredients that they probably don't know what to do with all the time. And, and so what? A lot of new cooks because of the pandemic. Right. Right. Restaurants are half open. And I'm probably going to shut down soon. So let's, we might as well get ready. <laughs> By the time this airs, it might be shut back down. It might be shut down. So if you're a new chef, new home cook, yeah. or an experienced home cook, we hope to give you immense value on yeah. this podcast today. And when you guys listen, we would love some comments with your like your best cooking tip. And then we can all kind of like create the Ivory Lemon community and share from one another. So I know you guys have some tricks up your sleeves. So I know my audience. You guys cook. So maybe we can all kind of share some tips. These are just 10 of ours. Yeah. So we're going to go one for one, each sharing five. Vince, do you want to kick it off? Uh, no, I'll let you kick it off. All right. So <laughs> my biggest tip, and this is based on a lot of the questions I get on my recipes, and especially when it comes to cooking as opposed to baking, is that I really want to encourage you when you're reading a recipe, whether it's my recipe or any recipe, To use it more as like a a rough method, not like a strict set of rules that you can't break. So for example, if you are reading my recipe for chicken and green bean stir fry, that's just like a method for you to learn how to make a really tasty and delicious 15 minute stir fry that you can then use with any protein, any veggies. It really doesn't matter if you have green beans. You could use asparagus, you could use broccoli, you could use peppers. If you don't have chicken, you could use shrimp, you could use pork, you could use tofu. So again, I would say probably 90% of my recipes are just like a rough method, the stir fry method, the salad method, the pasta method, etc. that you can really mix and match with what's in season, what's fresh, what's, what's growing in your backyard, what you have in your refrigerator, what you can access right now. Because I know you can't access everything all the time. I couldn't find a lot of things yesterday at the store. So, you know, use recipes as a method, not a strict guideline. Mm, you like, like that, Tim? I like that. <laughs> um, uh, so my, my first tip would be 
on the lines of that, but I think for new chefs or new cooks, uh, learn how to cook first before you learn how to follow a recipe. Mm. Okay, I think what happens to your point, like you're like emphasizing on like don't be locked into this recipe. Mm-hmm. Like you can edit, you can change yeah. if you don't like what you like, uh, but you have like the guts. I think a lot of new cooks get so caught up with this is the recipe. Mm-hmm. I need this paprika and I need this saffron. Right. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You guys, <laughs> right? I cooked out of a cottage yesterday. Like, I was like, no oil. Yeah, no. Know this, know that. And so I think the first step to do is really start um, trying ingredients by yeah. themselves and understand how do they taste, Yeah. what you like, what you don't like, and how can you change the taste of something or, or pull something with that. Cooking is just like painting. So you just want to be able to like... That. Cooking is just like painting. Yeah, you just want to bring all the colors in. It's getting poetic on me this morning. So that's the first tip. <laughs> I like that. Especially because like, I mean, just last night I was cooking with what I had. Yeah, and like literally you guys, like a little side tip, like onion, garlic, salt, Black pepper can make anything taste good. Yeah. Like You're getting lemon, but you like, mostly got it. Well, I'm saying, like, if everyone should have that yeah. easy access to that. You can make anything taste amazing. Fast. And if you're eating seasonally, you don't have to do a lot to make food taste good. Yep. That's the reason I eat seasonally. Okay. That leads me to my next tip. You ready for it? I really urge you to become a better cook, to cook with a variety of foods throughout the year. So I think what happens... Oftentimes, as we get in these habits of buying like the same three veggies every week, broccoli, green beans, lettuce, and we literally, first of all, they're all greens, you're mostly getting the same vitamins, and you eat it whether it's broccoli season or not, whether lettuce is growing or not, and you eat this, it's like you're eating monogamously all year round. So what I encourage you to do is to eat a variety of colors all year and use the season to guide you. So of course, right now it's the summer, so it's super easy. But even if it's, let's say, the dead of winter, you know, get eggplant one week, get rapini another week, get cauliflower another week. Try to mix up what you're eating. And the reason why that'll make you a better cook is that you're going to have to kind of flex your muscles in the kitchen and learn how to make different things taste good. So if you've never added thinly sliced fennel to your salad, try that. If you typically just get tomatoes and cucumbers, try radishes, try red peppers in your salad. You know, just try different foods every week and no matter what you'll become a better cook because you're going to become familiar with how to make different foods taste good as opposed to really locking in that steamed green bean recipe you got mm. <laughs> I like that. and it's better for you because you're going to get a wide variety of vitamins and nutrients all year round yeah and, and it, yeah it makes food fun yeah uh sorry my uh my second tip is uh plan your work and work your plan i think a lot Ooh. of people don't like cooking because they're like, oh, too many dishes and all like that. And I mm-hmm. think and I watch people cook and you guys do this completely backwards. That's a fact. Right? And so there's a lot of things that could be one pot, right, and one cutting board. You just got to work your plan. And I think also just clean as you go mm-hmm. for easy cleanup. Uh, and that will kind of alleviate the stress. Also, on the plan side of things, it's okay if you mess up a dish. I think also when people yeah. cook, they want it to look exactly how it looks on Liz's blog or <laughs> how it looks like on Tasty or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, no, dude. Like, yeah. your home cook is for your family. It's for you. You're not a Michelin star chef. The technical abilities come in later. 100%. You have to start off, you know, from the beginning, level one. Right. Before you get to level 10. True. So work your plan. Funny. We're going to go past 10 because I'm already thinking of other tips. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, like, slide in a bonus one. Get Invest in a really sharp knife. Yes. Because if you're trying to cook on a dull knife, first of all, it's dangerous. Remember, the sharper the knife, the safer it is. Because if you're using a sharp knife, you're not pushing hard. You're, you're working very gently. So if you are using a dull knife, you're going to be pushing hard. So if, God forbid, you get your finger under there, your finger is going to be damaged. Yeah. So invest in a sharp knife, really good cutting boards. It's just going to make the process of cooking more enjoyable. And if you enjoy something, you do it more. And if you, the more you do it, the better you get. All right, I snuck that one in, but that's not my tip. <laughs> my next tip is eat at restaurants that serve food from around the world. So growing up, we didn't eat at American chain restaurants. And as such, I was able to be exposed to a wide variety of foods. So for example, every Sunday we would eat at this Vietnamese restaurant. 
and the owner would come out and he would talk to us about the dishes he would tell us what to order there's a lot of really great items not on the menu so once you like get to know the people they'll recommend things to you and you're gonna like get exposed to different herbs different ingredients different proteins different cooking methods and i think that to your point about making food fun you know i got really into cooking because i realized that food is delicious so like vietnamese food is full of flavor and freshness and herbs and it made me excited about cooking whereas like if i was eating at american chain restaurants eating potato skins and nachos and chicken fingers which are basically all from a freezer to a fryer wouldn't be super into cooking <laughs> No, actually, yeah, as a as a as a uh, add on to that, that's so true. Like everyone that I know that had poor eating habits growing yeah. up, they don't like eating good food. And it's like, well, where'd you, you grow up eating? Yeah, what did you eat? Yeah, <laughs> you know, so build build that palate for and sure. And you guys, like, if you're if you're a parent and you, like you want your kids to be adventurous eaters and eat a variety of foods and eat healthier, uh, you gotta lead by example. I have so many parents that are like, my kid doesn't like kale. Well, do you like kale, Susie? Probably not. My kid doesn't eat this. Well, do you eat that, Karen? No. <laughs> so if you're not eating a wide variety of nutritious foods, don't expect your kids to be eating a wide variety of nutritious foods. If your kids are only eating off the kids' menu, chicken fingers, fish sticks, hot dogs, why is that? Why are you eating in restaurants with kids' menus? Yeah, the amount of kids that think meat is boneless is crazy to me. That's, you guys, that right there. Man, what kind of world? That, see, you know what a chicken nugget is? Why don't you talk about that? Um, Say that again. The amount of people that they that their kids think that like chicken is boneless. Yeah. Um, How did you eat chicken growing up? I mean, you ate the whole chicken. You ate meat with bones in it because like you have to kind of respect the animal mm -hmm. and respect what you're eating. And when you are so far away from what you're eating, that's where processed food comes in. That's where kids only get used to breaded fried chicken. Yeah. That's boneless, and that's where bad eating habits start really right. taking root because it's too processed out. And it's like cool when it's fun and it tastes great yeah. and it's easy, but there's a time and place for all of that. There's time and place for that. Like every night, no. Like that should probably be more of the treat. Or when yeah. you're like super tired and exhausted, then you throw that on. But not right. every night. And in general, yeah. you'll notice like most to my point about eating at restaurants from around the world, they don't have kids menus. You know. And that right there is how we were raised. We didn't eat kids' food. My mom didn't make like a separate pan of fish sticks for the kids. Like we all ate the same fish. Yeah. And same thing, we went out to eat. We typically ate at restaurants that didn't have kids' menus. So guess what I was doing? I was rolling Vietnamese fresh rolls with pork meatballs and putting cilantro in it and vermicelli noodles. Like, that's – there wasn't a kids' menu. Because <laughs> here's the thing. If you give your kid an option between, like, pho or a chicken finger, it's not fair. They're going to want the chicken finger. Yeah. So cut that out. Yeah, and let them try the pho. Yeah. They might just like it. They might just like it. And it's like eight bucks a bowl, super cheap. Uh, yeah. I'm off my high horse, but I get a lot of parents reaching out to me because my kids are yeah, pretty good eaters. Kids. And that's just, and I don't take credit. That's how my parents raised me. And I'm just super grateful for it. And I just want to one last thing remind you is that a lot of those restaurants are super cheap. So it's not a matter of like being out of reach or unaffordable. Because I know a kid's menu is cheaper, but like the amount of food you can get at a Vietnamese restaurant for $25 will blow your mind. Yeah, and even at my restaurant, we don't have we don't have a kids menu, and like it's fun to see parents like I don't think my kids are gonna like it. I'm like, no. what did Jacob say to you yesterday? They're gonna like it. He said it's the best tacos ever. He described it. Yeah, <laughs> and Jacob's my picky one. Yeah, so I always tell people like you know it really goes back to how you make stuff, and then uh, and like most kids don't like onions and peppers. And yeah, like, Jacob was like, I love the onions and peppers. It's just like and why? Because you saute them, you caramelize them. Yeah, like you, like you season exactly, them. Yeah, you know how to like. <laughs> Make it taste great. Yeah. You know? And then uh, kids will like it. Yeah. So you got to make it appealing. Are we on the third tip? Yeah. Uh, oh, we're getting more value I for know. Guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, my third tip is cook more seafood. Mm, I think that is facts, facts, facts. Like, seafood's something easy. It's easy to season. It's really easy to cook. Doesn't take much work. Like shrimp is the easiest thing on the planet to make. Quick is shit. Quick, um, but I want to see more people eating more fish and seafood um, because I I personally love it. And so yeah, <laughs> you'll be happy to know my seafood recipes have been crushing it lately. Yeah. So I think people are, and maybe because we're eating in restaurants less. Um, yeah. But I think there's like this weird 
like reputation. I know like, for example, when I go out to eat, I do often order seafood. And I think sometimes we tend to be intimidated to make it at home. Or like as a mom, you know, I'm never cooking for myself ever. Yeah. So like you got to make sure, well, the group eats seafood. And, you know, you know they'll like ground beef and a taco. But like mm-hmm. I really just want to say someone that grew up eating fish multiple times a week, it's ready in 15 minutes. Yeah. It's really easy to make delicious. I have a million seafood recipes. You put anything on seafood. Like we grew up eating honey Dijon salmon, which is literally mustard and honey mixed together in a bowl. Wipe that on That's salmon and bake it though, Vince. It's tasty. It's tasty. It's like, tasty. It's like you can put anything. It's such a, what's the word? It's like a sponge for, yeah. for a seasoning. Versatile. It's like a chicken breast. You can make fish take taste like anything. Taste anything you want. And, the, you know, they have the fillets now, so you don't have to worry about being a, an expert fish cutter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it, yeah. it's... Is, is obtainable. Even if you buy a whole fish, by the way, they'll clean it out and make it. Yeah, you can tell yeah. them clean it out, gill it for you, and then you throw it on the, the grill. Like, yeah. So you can stuff it and the literally in 15 minutes. Right. You got just a, a thing that's full of flavor. So Good I wa- tip. I want to see I'm more people that. cooking more seafood. Me too. Okay. I'm up to number four. So, like, we're getting towards the end of the list. Okay. So... Just like when you want to get stronger and build your muscles, you have to lift weights more often. So if you want to become a better cook, the easiest way is to cook more often. Bottom yeah, line. Cook every day. If you want to be a pro basketball player, you got to shoot hoops every day. If you want to do, be a good dancer, you got to dance every day. So anything that you want to become proficient in, you have to practice. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily, this is the perfect time in society, maybe in our history, to cook at home more often. And I think like now with the home delivery of groceries, you know, you can get them delivered to your door. It couldn't be any easier. And again, the more you do it, the better you'll get. And, and you'll start to feel, I'm sure many of you already are feeling like you're better cooks now than you were back in March. Mm-hmm. And guess why that is? Cause you're cooking more. Mm-hmm. So I just think that's like the bottom line of like anything you got to practice. Yeah, exactly. Um, I agree with that. Uh, learn how to uh, uh, balance meals. Mm. And that comes with like cooking every single day. And I think you'll be surprised at the little things you can add to really take a dish over. So when you talk so, about balancing a meal, what do you mean? So I, I, I tend to see new cooks uh, take something they love, like a barbecue sauce, yeah. and then douse the whole thing in barbecue sauce. Now, My husband is one of those people. I'm not against anyone that likes barbecue sauce, but I don't think every last thing I'm eating right now should be tasting like barbecue sauce. Yeah. And it's like putting melted cheese on everything. Exactly. And it's just like, you don't have to mask the flavor or try to take away something. If it's something's more bitter, you can learn how to balance that out, right? If something's more spicy, you can learn how to balance that thing yeah. out with things that you like, right? And um, uh, it's pretty easy when you start getting in the, in the kitchen more and prepping and learning how to become a better chef, a better cook. Um, but yeah, I think some steps that are really easy to balance is like use less ingredients. A hundred percent. Don't just use one, right? So use I think use three. Mm-hmm. And like I gave example, like onion, garlic, salt, and pepper can make anything taste good in the 100%. right balance. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be too salty. It shouldn't be too peppery. Yeah. It shouldn't be too onion. It shouldn't be too garlicky. I agree with that. Right? You have to balance it out. Uh, it can make a lot of things taste good. And so your little yeah shrimp dish, your little salmon dish, your little steak dish, whatever you're trying to make, your spaghetti, it can really take it over the edge. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's being patient with yourself and not, not trying to... Cooking takes a little bit of time, so you don't have to rush everything either. Right. Give right. yourself the time to cook. Give yourself the, the time to cook. And even in the quick, if you call something really quick to eat, remember, simplify it. Yeah. And if you're eating seasonally, it doesn't take a lot to make it taste good. That's part of why I like, go to the farmer's market every week. It saves me so much time the whole rest of the week. Yeah. Um, another good way that I balance flavors, which I learned from Asian cooking, and Mexico does it really well too, is the four S's, spicy, salty, sour, sweet. Mm-hmm. So whenever I cook, I make sure the food has all those components. So let's talk about like a salad dressing. You might want to have, a, you know, for the sour, that could be lemon juice. So this is why I talk about a method. So like the sour could be lemon juice. It could be balsamic vinegar. It could be red wine vinegar. Anything acidic, lime juice. And then for sweet, you could put in some honey. You could put in a little brown sugar. You could put in maple syrup. For um, salt, salt. And then for heat, 
You could mince chilies. You could add sambal paste. You could add cayenne. Whatever you want to do. Jalapeno. Yeah. Same thing like if you're marinating meat. Yeah. It just all goes like you could do. And like, oh, soy sauce is a good replacement for the salty part. Yeah. Hoisins are good for the sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think salty, sour, spicy, sweet is a really good way to know that your food's going to taste delicious no matter what. Yes. And you don't, you don't need a recipe. You don't need a recipe. Uh, that was my last point, like, reminding people that you don't need a recipe. Yeah. Shh. No, Vince, my <laughs> whole business. Just kidding. No, I agree. You do uh, not need a recipe. Uh, I think it's, but to caveat that, I feel like it, it's good to uh, have that guts, though. Like, yeah. go on, the, like, thelemonbowl.com and to be able to see, like, okay, this is how I want to make the stir fry, but I don't like water chestnuts, or I don't mm-hmm. like green beans, or I don't like rice. Well, you got noodles in you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, know. just take like, them out and add what you like, want. To- I don't have quinoa. Use couscous, use yeah. farro, use frica. Like, exactly. There's so many different. If you don't have brown rice, use quinoa. If you don't have bulgur wheat, use quinoa. Yeah. Like you can, any grain. Like if you don't have penne pasta, use rigatoni. Like same. Yeah. Yeah. You, same application. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just got to maybe cook something a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, for you to take more time. And, uh, you know, it's not all yet, but coming to you, you know, just buy iry spices and everything. It tastes amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's actually fact, though. Um, I was sad I didn't bring it out to the link yesterday. I got you. Okay, I have another tip. <laughs> this is a good one. And I, I have two more, guys. So we're going to be probably up to 12 by the end of this. You know, extra value. <laughs> no, no, no. So, okay. My next tip is to cook with other people. So I learned so much by cooking with others. So starting out when I worked in the hotel industry, just cooking with the hotel chefs i watched them i picked up different things because the thing of the the thing of the matter is that cooks don't necessarily realize what they're doing because we're in flow state so i'm a visual learner so for example i could ask vince for some cooking tips which i did today you're welcome but in general i'm gonna learn a lot more just spending a couple hours in my kitchen cooking with vince Mm -hmm. than hey vince on the phone like can you give me some advice on cooking whereas we cook together all the time and I've learned so much from that. And, and especially as you cook a lot, you know, it comes to a point where you can only read so much. You can only practice. Like sometimes you just got to be in a kitchen with other people. Yeah. And it's great, especially to cook with people that have totally different backgrounds yep. and not just like, like backgrounds of origin, but even backgrounds of like experience, like, yep. you know, et cetera. So I've learned a lot. I mean, you know this, that's why I ask you to cook all the time, but I learned so much just by being around you in the kitchen because it's the, it's the little things like the tiny little things that they do that you just won't pick up otherwise so yeah. if you have like a, a family member like maybe your grandmother's a great cook your aunt maybe your sister just if you've got around. friends like you can do i've gotten together with girlfriends and we all cook a bunch of food to like stock our freezers like cooking with other people i'm going to a food i'm hosting a food blogger retreat next week and we are going to be cooking together all week yeah and these are all food bloggers like me that probably do things totally differently and yeah. I'm going to learn so much from them and I think that that's a good way to become a better cook yeah um, taste 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 and taste some more that's talk about that you gotta taste from the beginning to the end while you're cooking the why, why is that important you want to make sure it tastes good <laughs> and you can't the thing of it is, is at the end of the recipe you can't make up for the layers of flavor you've got to season as you go yeah and you I can't feel, just salt it out at the end. Yeah, and I think the issue with a lot of people that follow the recipe, they just stop there. Yeah. And they expect it to come out perfect, but like different cuts of meat, more yeah. water or whatever. Different. Taste as you go. So you have to taste, taste as you go. And as we said earlier, as, as you're upgrading your palate and you're building that up, you'd be able to taste yeah. and know what needs to be added. Yeah. I don't know how to teach that other than like actually being with me yeah. or with my pops. Yeah. Because like you have to literally taste as you go and then you have to like – guess to see what you think yeah like something a little acidy what do you throw in there totally. to balance it out so like if you're making a meat <clears throat> marinade try it before you add the raw meat if you're making meatballs take a tiny bit of the ground meat fry it really quick to taste it you yeah. know there are ways to do it mm-hmm. you know because obviously you can't taste everything as it goes but there's yeah. ways around it yeah um oh, also a little side tip don't be afraid of salt i think a lot of people are afraid facts. of salt my mom said Now, some day. people, yes, but way too much salt in your food, and you know who you are. He's just yeah. a salt addict. But yeah. most people are so afraid of salt that, like, it, they uh, miss the true, like, awakening of flavors because they're afraid of, like, salt. And so that, talk about that. Salt has a purpose. Yeah, salt has a, a big purpose. 
I don't know why people are afraid of it. I just think people are afraid of making things salty. Mm-hmm. Um, but salt, um, I don't know the technical terms or anything like that, but when you salt things correctly, it can really bring out like the natural flavors oh, and yeah. anything you throw it in. So like a tomato, salt and vinegar, you let it sit for a little bit. It sounds weird, but you'll actually get a real tomato flavor, what it actually tastes like. 100%. Yeah, right. and so, so it like, brings out all the flavor. It brings out all the flavor. I think like it helps like brings out water, and that water helps brings out the flavor that too. of whatever you're whatever you're adding it to. So yeah, the I best food that. that you guys like probably has good salt content. Well, I mean, there's a reason restaurant food is so good. I mean, they're they're seasoning it properly, and I remember that's what I learned from a hotel chef is he, I would cook with him and he'd be like more, 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 and then I finally realized what I'm supposed to be tasting for. So then that point forward, I knew what I needed to taste for. Yeah. And then same thing, like, when I try to replicate, like, my aunt's Lebanese food, like, it's typically, and for me, it's also acid in Lebanese food, but it's, like, getting that right balance. And remember, guys, you can over, like, if you over on the salt, add more acid or water. Like, you can add alcohol. Like, there's ways to balance it if you go a little bit too far. If you add too much acid, add more salt more oil, whatever you can, you can, you can, there is some work you can do, but again, the more you practice, the better you get, the more you'll know. So don't be afraid to get in that kitchen. And if you're cooking from scratch, the chances of you over seasoning is very low because in reality, you're going to get much more sodium from anything processed, anything from a box, anything from a freezer, anything from a restaurant is going to have way more sodium just from, just from the fake ingredients that are in processed food. Yeah. So if you're cooking from scratch, don't worry about over salting. You're probably not. Exactly. You know what my mom said about your food the other night? She was like, we, so we got Irie takeout recently. She's like, it's one of the first restaurant meals I haven't had to add salt to. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, because they know how to season. They know how to season. But I think people are just like afraid of it. Yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid of it. I have a bonus tip. All right, final bonus tip. Fresh herbs are your friend. Yes. So you guys, especially now, it's summer. Everyone has no reason not to have like a pot of fresh herbs in in their deck, on their balcony. But fresh herbs are, first of all, from like the healthy cooking standpoint where I live, there's no calories and they add a ton of flavor. So... I, as a healthy chef, love to find ways to add a lot of flavor. I mean, obviously, salt's another example. No calories, lots of does a lot of value. Fresh herbs are the same way. So if your garlic is another example, high power, high flavor, low calorie, that's like how I lost weight. But fresh herbs have a purpose. So for example, if you're eating like a stew that's been cooking for hours, you want to finish that with fresh herbs to perk up, to waken up the whole dish because that bright, fresh, flavor of the herb will balance out that more like i don't know how you describe a stew but it's just like it, it's a different it's a it's a more deeper heavier flavor and you really need that bright freshness of fresh herbs so that's the one thing i just really recommend and you eat with your eyes so you want to make it pretty especially your kids so if you've got some cilantro on top of a taco a kid's gonna be more inclined to eat it at least my kids they're obsessed with cilantro oh my god some um, people, some, for some people it's like soap though i know all right Basil. Yeah. Sprinkle some basil on that pasta. I Fire. promise you, it'll be better than without. Yes. You Even parsley. It. Parsley, all fresh herbs. Chives. Chives, all of it. And, and use more than you think. Yeah. Especially if you're growing it and it's not like super expensive. Yeah, like if you've got it. It's, it's abundant. Don't be like the whole teaspoon of fresh herbs. It's not enough. You yeah. need a quarter cup yeah. if you're <laughs> serving four people. Literally. Like I'm very adamant about add more herbs Mm -hmm. to salads. And that's the thing is like herbs can be an ingredient in your salad. Yeah. Like you don't need to just have a little bit of parsley at the end. Yep. Add a bunch of parsley to the salad. Yep. Okay. I'm done. I get a little heated about this. No, (laughs) I'm with you. Any closing cooking thoughts, Vince? Um, uh, Hmm. What's the best thing you cooked lately? The best thing I've made lately. Um, it's not really like chefy chef, but this jam I made. Oh. With uh, these strawberries that Liz brought me. The Michigan strawberries? Okay. How was that? Fire. It was the best Were you going to bring me some? It was or? the best jam I ever made. Why haven't you brought me any? I think, well, I don't know why I haven't brought you any, but I think, that, I don't know how much jam is left. Really? Yeah, like, we've been eating it. It's like actually. What do you eat it on? Like toast and stuff? Toast. We can put it on anything. Glad you enjoyed the strawberries, man. Yeah, so, I think that's the best thing I made. You didn't even send me a picture. 
That's probably the best thing I've made lately. I'm glad. Those berries were really good. They were really good. You guys, good. I went to the strawberry farm, and they are some of the best berries I've had ever. So I, I got this flat. For, I was like, you need some of these. They were just. They're so good. They're just some berry batches. Are, I think we just had the good season for it. All right. Any closing thoughts? No. Uh, just uh, share with someone who wants to become a better cook. Yeah. Send um, this to someone. And we definitely gave you guys, I think, an intro to being a better cook. I think we'll uh, come up with better ways to give you guys more value. But I just think this is a great start. Yeah, and if there's anything else you want to know about cooking or anything, Let obviously any topic, any guest you want us to see, we've got some really cool guests coming up. I can't wait to share them. We've got Gina of Skinny Taste, my good friend, coming on. Uh, we also just have some episodes coming on that are pre-recorded. I mean, there's some good stuff coming. Yeah. We got some cake and wine tasting coming up. It's going to be good. I'm excited. All right, we're heading back to the lake, guys. So peace out. Thanks for everything. And... Tell your friend, tag us on Insta Stories if you're listening, give us a review, anything you can do to help us. We are just super, super grateful. And thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, peace out. Learn some jazz to you may as you. You gon' learn, you gon' learn, you gon' learn. It was just past one win to three man with a four or five step to the door, like, oh my gosh, just throw that cash in a back bag.